so that's what aperture is. Oh, hey my friend, I didn't see you there. I figured today I'd take you on a little walk of a recent walk that I did through the West Coast trails along the ocean, packing along my trusty sidekick, Fuji Superior 400. An underrated grocery store brand that I find is still capable of producing those dark, danky greens that we've all known and loved and come to expect from Fuji. So how did the trip go? Well, my friend, adventure awaits. So let's dive in. As big as my... Hey, careful. Foot. Oh, man. That'd be a huge spider. And I think the biggest spider is as big as Daddy's gut. Yeah, there's some pretty big spiders out there. There are indeed some pretty big spiders out there. Fortunately, on this walk, the only thing that we came across was spider webs. Although, those have been known to have spiders, so be on the lookout. I like the framing of this one, the way that the trees were structured, the way that the light was kind of coming through. It was a little crowded and a little more messy than I normally like to go for, but overall, it was actually one of my favorites from the trip, which is, uh, which is a bad sign that things are only going downhill from here. I think for those next two, I got a little excited with the, the way that the first one was framed. And I was like, hey, let's go for some more leading lines. We'll go for some nice symmetry with the vertical trees. And, uh, and the images that it produced, I would like to call perfectly average. We got the, we got the Fuji film in there. So we'll get some, hopefully some nice swampy greens, take advantage of all the, the moss on the ground and stuff in the trees. And apparently we found another good spot. So let's go check it out. All right, so we've got this spot here, which wide open spot might be something interesting. And then there's also this tree, which I really like, but I'm not sure how that's going to translate. So we will see. And yeah, perfect view. Find a good What's interesting about that tree, aside from the fact that it's an interesting looking tree, was just the sheer insanity or ignorance of shooting during this time of day. I mean, this is about midday. The sun was relatively high. Fortunately, it was behind some clouds. So we weren't getting like just beating down sun in the middle of the day, but it was, still wasn't great. And then if you look at the way that the tree is structured and you look at all of the intricacies of it, 35 mil was okay. I probably could have done a little better to capture some more details. I really wish I packed my medium format, had a little more option in regards to that, that beautiful, beautiful resolution. But also the fact that it was backlit made it a little punchy and a little contrasty, which works okay for the photo, but again, might have lent itself better to a black and white photo, maybe some Ilford HP5 push two stops. Again, anytime I go out walking, I always try to pack one camera. I went through a phase where I was packing all the cameras and I basically just slowed everybody down, which isn't good when you're on the West Coast because uh, there's bears. Is that that? Yeah, I know. Some more nifty trees here. That's kind of neat. Which one looks... Uh, that was also kind of cool, that like lonely one up there. Anyway, the walk continued, the bears stayed out of our way, and we carried on down the trail looking for more trees, as what you typically do on the west coast. A lot of trees, a lot of ocean. So if you're not into filming those, you best find another place to go. But I was on the lookout for a certain kind of tree in particular. I was kind of feeling a little bit disappointed with the backlighting of that last really fancy tree that I liked, and I was like, hey, it didn't work out the first time. Let's do it again. See if you can make it even worse. I think I like that one the most. Okay, and then hold it. And... Perfect. I think I got it. Cool, got it. And all in all, I gotta say, I actually probably prefer this one, at least from an artistic point of view, compared to the first one. Even though the first tree was significantly more interesting and it had all kinds of branches going all over the place. I don't know, there's just something about this one and the way that it follows the, the quote-unquote rule of odds. It's got that majestic tree in the middle, all dying and dying majestically. Not sure that's a thing. 
Regardless, it just kind of felt good and balanced as far as creepy dying trees go. After that, I felt like shooting some stereotypical postcard images, the kind of things that you share with friends and family and people look at and say, oh, that's nice, but that's it. Get at it. Well, after that, you know what I was looking for. <laughs> That's right, more dying trees. Interesting, just happened, the sun just came out. I'm not sure if this is gonna translate through the video, but if you look over here, the water is super gray. And then as you pan over here, it's like neon turquoise blue. And all because of the, all because of the sun. It was really interesting, because basically this whole walk out here, it was all gray and dark and dreary. So we'll see how many shots are we into it? 15, 16, 17 or so. And then now, depending on how long the sun stays out for, it'll be interesting because all of these colors are gonna start popping on the way back. Fortunately, I stumbled across this lonely fellow and decided to snap a shot of him. Only this time, thankfully, because of the sun and the way that it was positioned, instead of a dark and scary backdrop, it was kind of refreshing and clean. Interesting, and just another lesson that if you go out for long enough, the weather is eventually going to change. You're going to be able to capture different situations and look at things differently and have the light bounce off things different, which is going to result in a different composition and a different overall look and aesthetic and feel to your image. Well, at that point, I'd had about all of the dead, dying trees that I could take. The sun was out and starting to get hot, so we figured we'd pack up and call it a day. But on the drive home, well, managed to stumble across this lovely little fellow, a rusted old tractor parked on the side of the road. Yeah, I know. That's our, our next purchase. Actually, I'm not really sure you'd call that a tractor. Is it like a cat? Caterpillar? Caterpillar tractor thing? Anyway, another opportunity to showcase and highlight the benefits of the Fuji Superior 400. And like most of the other images from this trip, they were all right, but nothing that special. That said, I think I found the area that I messed up on in this one, which is that they were just way too bright, which meant that I had to shoot at F16, F18, so I was getting sort of none of that depth, none of the bokeh that I was kind of after, and basically everything just looks in focus, which makes it look more like a commercial photo than something neat and artistic. The other thing was, I was kind of rushed for time, and so I took it very much at eye level. I kind of just like ran up to it, snapped a couple shots, got back in the car, and went home. There probably was an opportunity here to spend a little more time looking for more creative angles, or maybe shooting away from the sun a bit more, finding areas with more shadow where I could have captured that, maybe even some macro style shots. I don't know, basically anything other than the shots that I took. But that's life. That's photography. And yeah, that's Fuji Superior 400. <laughs>